Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to another Title Town Hall. My name is Kevin Thatcher, the founder and CEO here at Independence Title, bringing to you another fantastic episode. This one is so relevant to our real estate industry. You see the sign behind me talks about preventing wire fraud. And today we're going to have an amazing guest I'm going to bring on who is my personal banker for the last 10 years, Kendra from Center State Bank. Welcome to the show today. Thank you so much for having me, Kevin. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you. So today is so relevant. For those of you that saw my Instagram post I did this morning and on Facebook, I did a quick video talking about a client that received a text message that appeared to be the title company. It was someone who pretended to be one of our closers, told this client to uh, wire $30,000 for closing and and the client knew she had a closing coming up, so didn't think anything about it. Now, there were a few red flags that we'll talk about, you know, what people can can look out for. Um, but it, it amazes me on how a client would wire just $30,000 to some random name. The client's name was Anita, the person they were sending it to. So they weren't sending it to the title company. They weren't sending it to the closer themselves. Uh, like I'm selling my grandmother's home now and, and the buyer wrote the deposit check to me personally instead of the title company. So it just goes to show how much trust is built through a real estate transaction that she relied on a text message and wired money to someone by the name of Anita thinking that was for closing. So let's talk a little bit about, do, do you see this a lot? I'm sure you get a lot of calls of, of people that are facing victim of, of banking fraud like this. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we see this every single day. And um, the challenge that we run into is that um, people have gotten very relaxed and comfortable with technology. And uh, we forget to pick up the phone and call and verify the information that we have. Obviously, we need to vet the originator of the information coming in the door to make sure that we have correct contact information, phone numbers, et cetera, et cetera, so that when we need to authenticate, situations like this, we're able to do so. And that is one of the reasons that when you initiate a wire with Center State Bank, we have a multi um, authentication process, meaning that we have to be able to authenticate with the client um, their transaction um, in a way that was different than the way that they sent it. Um, and as you know, today, everything is done electronically. Um, you know, business owners, title companies, attorneys log on to their laptops or their desktops and they initiate their wires. Um, we have to be able to make contact with our client that is prearranged prior to that transaction to authenticate that request. Okay. So, so let's talk for a minute because, you know, I've obviously banked with you for many, many years uh, and I was hesitant to switch from a big bank over to uh, you know, a smaller local bank, you know, not not this national or international brand. Um, so I was hesitant 10 years ago, and, and I'm glad I did for many reasons, which we'll talk about. And I just had a call today talking to someone. So uh, why is it so important to know your banker and not just be a, a, a number, but actually be a name at a local bank? Well, it's extremely important, Kevin, to be able to have a point of contact. Um, if you speak to business owners that deal with these larger financial institutions, in most cases, it's very hard for them to even get somebody on the phone because when you dial in, you're shipped off to some number in Timbuktu speaking to somebody that doesn't even speak clear English, going through a 20 minute identification process, et cetera, et cetera. And then you still can't get an answer because there's so many layers of management. So, you know, when you're dealing with a local community bank, it's definitely more hands on. And what sets us aside and apart from larger financial institutions is that we are very service oriented. We touch our customers all the time. We are accessible, which is the most important thing of all, is that when you have an issue or you have a problem, you can dial into one of our branches. And, my, and our business owners, they have, my num they have my number, they have my cell phone number. There's an issue in most cases, they can resolve it with my office staff, but they know that they have a lifeline if they need one. And you don't have that in the larger financial institutions. And we know coming, uh, you know, as we're ending, hopefully getting out of this COVID-19 crisis, we know the role that, you know, everyone knows who saw my posts and my comments and my videos talking about, you know, the benefits of banking with a smaller bank. But, you know, even nationally, when they were saying, you know, the larger banks were failing, the larger banks weren't 
uh, providing their clients, you know, the, yeah. these paycheck protection loans. They said, bank small, go to your local community bank, deal with your local bankers. You know, so so it was so important. And I get chills just thinking about it because, you know, we were so blessed to have the relationship with you to know that our staff were protected. We didn't have to lay people off during this crisis. We know deal counts were down and we wouldn't have had a choice to, to let people go or give them some time off or make them go on unemployment. And we were so honored to have that relationship with you. Uh, but most importantly, you know, we cried together during it and <laughs> we celebrated together. And you don't get that with your local bank. Yes, we did. And, you know, it was an unfortunate situation, uh, such as what we find ourselves in today with this um, COVID-19 pandemic um, that really demonstrated um, in, in action, live, immediately, the importance of your relationship with your bank and your banker. Um, I have, I know a lot of people in the business community, and I have people that I know that bank with larger banks just because they like to bank with larger banks. Um, you know, and they couldn't even get somebody on the phone. And, um, you know, they called me immediately and I, you know, I got them in, in the system. And yes, it was very overwhelming. It's been very stressful. We didn't plan for this. Um, but we, we literally had to set up a platform um, for this situation overnight, practically. We processed over 14 years worth of loans in little, a little under two weeks, which is unprecedented. It's amazing. And it is. It is. And I, I, I'm so happy that I was able to help uh, so many such as you and be able to keep your um, employees on staff and, you know, continue doing business. Yeah, it was definitely a, a, a lifeline that we needed. Um, and it, it gets us a little bit off topic of why we're doing this video today. But I do like to stress the importance of banking local. So a lot of people were calling me like, how do you get the money? I'm like, well, you should have switched to Kendra at Center State when I told you seven, eight years ago. And you're like, well, no, I like the big name bank. I like to be able to have a bank on every corner. I'm like, it's great until you need it. And now when you needed the bank, you had no one to call. So it was very well, important. You know, truthfully, Kevin, with technology today, I mean, brick and mortar is becoming a thing of the past. I mean, you can do everything practically on your laptop, your desktop, your smart device, your smartphone device, et cetera. And so, um, yeah. Absolutely. So let's shift back to our topic where we're talking about wire fraud. As I said at the beginning of, of the um, interview today, you know, we did have a client that wired over $30,000 of closing proceeds. Now, mind you, she did get the money back. So thank God she got it back. She acted quick enough, which is why we wanted to produce this video. Yeah. So let's talk about, you know, from a banking standpoint, you know, a as a title company, not all title companies use it, but we use a platform called a uh, positive pay. So let's talk to our clients a little bit about the benefits of positive pay. For those of you that do not use it, it's an important tool to really look at. Um, but that's what protects us from people accessing our account. So tell the viewers a little bit about what positive pay is. So um, positive pay is a product solution that we offer that is a fraud detectant um, platform. And essentially, to put it in layman terms for everybody, it's putting a lock on your front door. Um, you know, uh, as you submit uh, checks, as you issue those, um, you transmit to us on a daily basis or whenever you issue those checks, your issue check file. And there's pertinent information as it relates to each one of those items. And as those items are presented to the bank for payment through in clearing, we compare that to what you have sent to us. And if there are any exceptions on any of that information, payee, amount, etc. cetera, um, then we reach out to you uh, electronically, usually via email, um, for you to actually decision those items. Um, and we have different forms of positive pay. Um, we have the basic positive pay, which is just, you know, the check issue platform um, that covers just only checks that you've issued. But we also have a filter platform through positive pay where you, we can set it up so that it will also monitor electronic uh, transactions, ACH transactions that may be coming through your account. And um, you know, most of our trust and escrow accounts we have on an automatic block, but we do have some title agents that um, prefer to have the filter because there may be certain things that they pay through there that come through electronically that they wanna still continue to be able to do. So that would be our filter um, pl platform through positive pay. 
Awesome. And I know it's so important now, you know, and that, and that's what obviously protects the title company for people accessing our account. But now the whole idea of the video was talking about the consumer, uh, may, maybe the uh, per consumer that doesn't really understand technology. They're not great with wire transfers. You know, we had a client the other day that wired money to Center State Bank instead of Independence Title, although the wiring instructions clearly say beneficiary bank and uh -huh. beneficiary, which is the title company, and you're working with the title company, the contract says the title company, and, and it says center state bank, not you know some random bank, and, and they still do it wrong. So, yeah. so we're faced with a situation where clients are wiring money like this. What are some of the steps that a client can take when working with a bank to prevent wire, uh, wire fraud? You know, So a client wants to wire money for a closing, what, what should they look for? So, you know, Kevin, it's really important that they verify that the information that they're receiving is accurate and authentic. Um, that's probably the first and foremost thing that they need to do. Um, you know, a lot of times people, believe it or not, they get wiring instructions and they don't do any further follow up from there. They just, they, they put total credence in the information that they received and that's it. You really have to follow up on your information. You need to get in contact with the people that you're working with to make sure that the information that you have is correct. Even if that means that you have to call the bank and try and get some assistance there. And again, this is working with a, a local community bank as, as opposed to a larger financial institution. You're very likely to get the help that you need as opposed to not getting that help. Absolutely. And a couple of things that I want to talk about, you know, just to give the clients a little bit of, of, uh, comfort and understanding the process, you know, typically where is the breach happening? Sometimes it's the title company if they're not using secure type of, of emails. Like we use secured emails, we use double opt-in authentication for our emails. So if someone were to, uh, you know, they get email gets hacked and they start spoofing messages, it, it's a lot more difficult for companies that are dealing with higher level technology. You know, we have to receive text messages to log into these items, similar to like sending wires with the bank. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we don't give out the full account information on our wiring instructions. We make them either physically call our office or we make them um, text in to get the account number. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, but like we talked about the client, it still happens because someone sent them wiring instructions. Yeah. Although every email that we send on the bottom says we will not request changes in wiring instructions. We will not ask you to wire money elsewhere. You know, it, it's hard to really protect these clients and we have to make sure that they just understand. So by putting out a video like this, we're hoping that they are going to watch it. You know, in our email signature, we have a video that was issued um, by, by the National Title Association talking about how to protect your consumer's money and how to prevent wire fraud. You know, one of the things we just set up recently as well is we have a disclosure that goes up right at the beginning. And what we do is we make sure that the client will initial like a six or seven statement document saying you will send money to Center State Bank. We will not ask you to change your instructions ever. This is our phone number. This is our bank. It will never be a bank other than Center State. Um, and here's our wiring instructions. So sign. Right. And sign then back to what I said before, you know, how important and critical it is that out of the gate, you're, you're laying the foundation for this. By and you have to. information and letting them know what the game rules are. Yeah. So, so some of the tips for the people that are here, you know, even the consumers, you should start, if you're using Gmail, you should start using what's called double authentication, two factor authentication to get into your email, which basically means you need a password and you need either a Google authentication code or a text message or a code that will be sent to you by some other means to log into your email. So that will prevent someone from accessing your account without your email. Now, can it happen? Absolutely. These techies are getting better and better every day. You know, yeah. in 2016, I think wire fraud was, was in the double digit millions. And, and now I think it's in the billions of dollars every year that people are stealing it's money. It's white collar crime. And, and most exactly. of the time they get away with it. So what do you do? What, what would a client do if they were, uh, you know, like this client yesterday, we told her what to do. So what would you recommend a client do if they were to get hit by wire fraud and they realize who do they call? Well, I mean, they need to start off with their bank. <laughs> uh, 
um, you know, because when you experience wire fraud, um, particularly when a wire has been sent maybe somewhere, you realize that a wire has gone somewhere that was not intended to go, um, we have to perform a recall. And unfortunately, we are at the liberty of the, or, or, you know, of, of the other bank for them to respond to us. We have no control over that time frame, And in a lot of cases, if the money is not returned, it's going to some account that's been set up fraudulently with the bank. And that money is gone before we even know that it went to the wrong place. Yeah, because clients don't realize, right? It could take 24 yeah. hours. Like this yeah. client, it was, it was done actually. What's today? It's a, we're doing this video on a Thursday. It was done actually. She received a text message Tuesday night, sent it first thing uh, Wednesday morning. And then it wasn't until Wednesday afternoon where she's like, we sent it, we sent it. They finally sent us the confirmation and it was sent to some weird bank name to someone by the name of Anita. And it's like, you know, great educational to tools like this. And, you know, you and your team educating your clients when they come in, you know, and you right out of the gate, educating them about how this process is going to work. Because as soon as she got a text message, she should have been picking up the phone and calling the title company and saying- Especially that it's closing proceeds and you sent your deposit to a different bank right. and it's not independence title. But the thing right. is, is the consumer, unfortunately, sometimes doesn't connect the dots. They have trust in, in the situation, trust in yeah. just life in general. And that's, um, that's why they have to be educated and, you know, um, again, helpful tools like this and, you know, training your team that, you know, when they deal with that client from the onset in at inception, educating them, maybe even providing them some kind of printed material about how the process is going to work and red flags and things you should look out for and not do that. You know, a lot of people that are not educated otherwise about it would just do out of out of kind nature. OK, they want me to send the money. I need to do that right away and not realize that they really need to, you know, um, authenticate things like that. Yeah, absolutely. So you'll call your local bank. The bank's going to try and get the money back if they can. Yeah. You're going to call the FBI and more than likely, if it's not at the million dollar threshold, they're going to tell you they don't, have time they, to do. yeah. they don't have time to deal with it. Uh, and, you know, because this is we're talking in the billions of dollars of, of right. wire fraud. You call your local police department. Maybe, maybe not. You know, will they get around to doing a report? Um, but you yeah. really need to act quick. You know, so and a lot of people say, well, don't you have insurance for that? I'm like, yes, we do if it was our fault, but this was not our fault. Right. They actually received the uh, figures to send from the mortgage broker. So the mortgage broker emailed the client uh -huh. the uh, closing disclosure, which showed the amount of money they preliminary needed to send into closing subject to the title company doing the final figures. And this is not the first time this has happened. And what these criminals are doing is they're sitting and watching this yeah. consumer's email because yeah. they clicked on some stupid link in a Facebook ad or something yeah. that, that infected their computer. They hack into your domain and they're sitting in the background just waiting. Just yeah, waiting they, have, the they have software that watches and triggers keywords, money, closing, yes. and, and they received the figures from the mortgage broker. And then this, this hacker texted the client and said, hey, wire this money tomorrow. Here's our wiring instructions. Uh, and, and, you know, good luck on your closing. And, and it was so super weird, but it happens every day. But it, to answer these clients' questions is there is no insurance for this. There is no insurance to protect the well, consumer. The only best insurance that you have is education. Educating exactly. them and educating your team and staying current with different things that are going on um, in the bank with regard to fraud and things like that. Um, it's important. It really is because um, we're in the fraud capital of the world, Kevin. You know that. And just as, just as we're working just as hard to prevent it, they're working 10 times harder to create it. Absolutely. Well, we're getting up to our 20 minute mark. I like to keep them short and sweet. Um, you know, we appreciate you hopping on this call today just to educate the consumers a little bit. We're going to try and put out as much uh, additional information we can on this topic because, you know, I'm glad this client, knock on wood, did got their money back and they're going to be able to move forward with buying their house. Um, but it doesn't always happen. The clients do right. lose the money. And and not only is it sometimes not 30,000, it's 300,000 or 3 million or 600,000. And you have to be yeah. so careful and you have to be 
uh, so alert when you're, you're doing these types of closings. And my number one tip is pick up the phone. Do not call the phone number in the email. Google the company. Right. Check their number, check their, their Google listing, make sure they have reviews, make sure it's a legitimate listing and call that number and verify with them personally that they sent the email, verify the account number. Uh, we actually just added today to this document, the phone number for the bank so they can call the actual bank and yeah. verify, hey, is Independence Title a legitimate title company that we can wire money to? Uh, we're going to try and put as many safety measures in place because a lot of times it, it may not be us, but it may be that title company that's not big on technology uh, or that law firm that doesn't do as many closings that can learn a tip or a trick on some of the things that that we're doing to enha enhance the safety and security for our clients. So thank you for hopping on this call. Where can people, I have your phone number below. This is your website, Center State Bank. Uh, what's the best way for, for my viewers if they want to set up an account and get to know their banker? What's the best way for them to call you? So they can either call either one of my offices. My primary office is Coral Springs, which is 954-340-1822. But the absolute very best way to contact me because I'm constantly on the go is via email. And that's Salerno at centerstatebank.com. Awesome. So thank you so much. You know, I, I really appreciate you taking the time to hop on the call today and and really educate people on on what to look for, what to listen for, what to ask when sending money and working with your bank. And and just, you know, it's scary. People are buying these houses and it could be their first house ever. And it could be their life savings that they um, you know, they saved up or maybe money they inherited from an estate of someone passing away. And it's all they have. This fraud could be a life changing experience for somebody. Absolutely. So again, thank you for joining us. For those of you that are watching, this is Title Tip, uh, Town Hall by Independence Title. Visit us online, www.titlerate.com. If you have any questions, we're always here to answer them. Check out our YouTube channel. Check out our Facebook videos. We have tons of educational content specifically on this topic and other topics. So as always, thanks for watching Town Hall, and we look forward to seeing everyone on the next one or at the closing table soon. Have a great day, everyone. Have a good one.